to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers. Today, we are at the Fort King George at the Icons of Tobago Museum. Now, this museum features the life's work of two Tobago icons, Calypso Rose and the late Winston Shadow Bailey. In the next half hour, we will tour this property while giving you a glimpse of what this museum entails. We'll also be bringing you up to date on all the major happenings across Tobago. So sit back, relax, and get ready as Let's Talk Tobago starts now. The Jean de la Vallée is eradicating the sea bridge woes. We take you on a tour of the new vessel. Fire and natural disaster victims receive checks from the National Self-Help Commission. We take you to the launch of the We Say Yes Youthpreneur program and later the Happy Haven School hosts free sign language classes. All this and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. Greetings, this is Marcy Griffiths and you're watching Let's Talk Tobago. Leave it right where you got it. Everyone now has access to view the life's work of two of Tobago's greatest Calypsonians, Calypso Rose and Winston Shadow Bailey, right here at the Icons of Tobago Museum. The museum was launched in March and highlights the life, music and achievements of the icons. In our first story, the Jean de la Vallée arrived in Trinidad on June 19th and is already providing efficient service on the sea bridge. Our cameras were there on its maiden voyage to Tobago and in this report, we take you on a tour of the new vessel. Here's more. 800 passengers, 156 vehicles, comfortable seating, clean facilities. The MV Jean de la Vallée has made its maiden voyage to Tobago. This as the government of Trinidad and Tobago and the Tobago House of Assembly ensures that continued reliability on the sea bridge is a priority. Following its arrival, Chief Secretary Honorable Kelvin Charles, Secretary of the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, Councillor Nadine Stewart Phillips and other dignitaries toured the vessel. Today has been such a fantastic day for, for us because it represents in a very sense that there is indeed a season of growth and development that is taking place on the island. The MV Jean de la Vallée has two decks and each includes some outdoor seating. There's also an elevator to accommodate persons with physical disabilities and give others an option. The ramp that we have here in Tobago is testament to that. There was never a trial run. The engineers at NITCO designed the ramp, and as you saw, the ship birthed perfectly. And I understand the same thing is going to occur in Port of Spain. You would realize too that we, we are now, we have moved back to the GSS birthing facility. It has been dredged, and our ships will now be operating from that. The trip should take under three hours each way, and Chief Secretary Charles thanked the population for having patience. We would have said to you that we were moving to treat with the problem. We explained the difficulty and we said that, listen, procuring a vessel is not like walking into a Neil and Massey or one of those agencies and purchase one and walk out with it. It is something that would take time because, first of all, one had to get the specifications right. And then one had to go in search of a vessel consistent with those specifications. The Jean de la Vallée is being leased from Virtue Ferries for a period of one year, in the first instance, for service between Trinidad and Tobago and is stationed in Tobago. Rose MacArthur Linda Sandy Lewis, also known as Calypso Rose, is the undisputed Calypso Queen. She is a Tobagonian and was born in 1940 in the village of Bethel. She became the first woman to win the Road March title with her song, Give Me More Tempo, in 1977. Now, three Tobago families who were victims of fires have received grants from the National Commission for Self-Help. Chief Secretary Honorable Kelvin Charles was on hand to assist with the distributions. Here's more from Patricia Nicholson. A brief grant distribution ceremony was held at the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy on Thursday, July 25, 2019. Two of the three recipients spoke to us about their ordeal and expressed how relieved they are to receive assistance. I'm very proud, very happy, comforted to know that 
the state has such a facility uh, in times of need because it's very stressful uh, experiencing the fire. The whole house has to be rewired. Part of the house has to be reconstructed. And this is where we would be, be doing. So we start as soon as possible to put things back in order. A hard life, and where there's life, there's hope, sir. At least hope comes. Uh. I will say thanks to the chief sec, thanks to the um, self-help company. The third victim, Victoria Douglas of Blackrock, was not present to receive her grant. The three grants totaled $65,000. Director of the self-help Tobago branch, Ruthlyn Antwine, said fire victims are dealt with as a matter of priority by the commission. So you will hear persons say, well, how come Mr. Gregor could get uh, assistance so quickly? And I sent in my application years ago and they didn't get, I didn't get anything. It is because of uh, the, the, the sort of uh, disaster that Mr. Gregor and others with disasters uh, would have uh, had. Uh, we want to get them back on their feet as quickly as possible. Chief Secretary Charles said during the period January to July 2019, 41 Tobagonians received assistance from the National Commission for Self-Help. And the total amount expended in respect of that assistance, $769,200.99. So we can actually wrong that to about um, $770,000. And you know that the commission, as with every other state entity, has had to work with less resources. And in that regard, they have to do more with less. And they have, in fact, been doing that. The National Commission for Self-Help now has two project officers and two directors in Tobago. This will lead to a strengthened unit in Tobago and ultimately greater benefits to Tobagonians. I'm Patricia Nicholson for Let's Talk Tobago. The late national icon Winston Bailey, better known for his stage name, The Mighty Shadow, was born in Trinidad but grew up in Lake Otto with his grandparents. He started singing calypsos at the age of eight and was the second Calypsonian to win both the International Soka Monarch and the Trinidad Road March competitions simultaneously. Now this, young people are the inheritors of tomorrow and they are diving into a world of business and entrepreneurship as the We Say Yes Youthpreneur program is launched. Take a look at this story. 23 persons from across Tobago are learning how they can become full-fledged entrepreneurs. They are part of Cycle 1 of the Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs We Say Yes Youth Entrepreneur Program in collaboration with the We Say Yes organization and the Rotary Club of Tobago. The young people are being taught the basics of entrepreneurship so they can assist in the diversification of Tobago's economy one day. Entrepreneurship is a very important part of the ministry's work agenda and trying to uh, facilitate that kind of activity among young people towards helping them to um, live a better life, a more prosperous life, a more promising and have a more promising future. Entrepreneurs create jobs and create the right conditions for a thriving society. This is why the team believes the area of entrepreneurship on our island must be developed. If you look at the demand versus supply of jobs for young people over the next years or so, until 2030, you'll see there's a big gap. And therefore, to solve it, we have to either create jobs or we have to create youth entrepreneurs. The participants will undergo six weeks of training, during which they have to create a business idea and participate in a sales day in Scarborough. And we joined with We Say Yes when we heard of the program and what it offered. And that's because, well, for this year for Rotary, for everyone who should know that Rotary is an international organization. And Rotary has six areas of focus, and one of those areas is economic and community development. The program ends on August 29th, 2019. The world of work can be challenging and it's best to have a head start before even venturing into it. One Division is making that experience possible with its World of Work program. We have all the details after this message.
Yo, 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 Tobago, what's up? This is yours truly positive from beautiful Tobago and you're locked on to Let's Talk Tobago. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome back. You are watching Let's Talk Tobago and we are at the Icons of Tobago Museum, one of the island's newest tourism products offering history and heritage to its visitors. So the July-August vacation is a great time for young people to enhance their skills and prepare for employment. That's why the Department of Youth Affairs annual World of Work program provides students and young people who've completed secondary school with the opportunity to experience the work environment and further their personal development. Here are the details. World of Work, an initiative of the Division of Sport and Youth Affairs, provides young people between the ages of 16 and 18 with the basic tools needed to obtain employment. The idea behind it is for young persons to obtain all that is required to prepare themselves for the world of work. Initiatives um, such as World of Work for us uh, seek to enhance the lives of our young persons because it contributes directly to developing particular skills. There may be training opportunities existing out there for young persons to benefit from. Why I would suggest World of Work in the first instance is because uh, we are one of the few, if not the only one, that gives a level of focus specifically to that lower age group of 16 to 18, just as we are out of fourth form, fifth form, and in some instances sixth form, because we recognize that that, that would have been an initial grouping that was not catered to. No two workplaces are the same. At the World of Work program, participants are presented with various tools to help them navigate their environment. For example, having a positive attitude, how to dress for the workplace, cover letter and resume writing, interview skills, and this year a new element was added, how to interact with social media in the workplace. But having learnt all of that, the challenge is to stand out sufficiently so that they can be competitive. My experience has been very informative. There's a lot of information that, to me, well, it was repeated because I've been representing my school for a while, but it's been presented in a new way where I've been able to accept the information properly. For example, we would have to uh, put on a play for reenacting an engaged employee versus an disengaged employee. Uh, we also did posters that we would have posted online to make sure and highlight the uh, effects of social media on young people. Past participants who are flourishing in their respective areas were brought in to speak with this year's participants. We feel that that is particularly helpful because um, it's good when those of us who are already trained and we have a particular level of knowledge are able to convey, but it's even better when they can relate to persons who have, one, been directly involved in the program and, two, would most obviously be a lot closer to their age group. For me, the World of Work program would have taught me life skills, and one of those life skills is that you have to prepare. Whatever it is that you want to do in life, it takes some sort of preparation. I would have started as, as a DG, right? And, you know, I would have done it for years. Since I was going to um, Compre, I would have done it. And I wasn't getting the kind of forward and support that I would have wanted from parents and somewhat peers as well. Thanks to the, the World of Work program, no lie, I went down the right path. I certified myself and I started working on the radio overnight. After these sessions, students are placed in various organizations, both in the private and public sector, to apply the skills they would have learned from the program. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The Icons of Tobago Museum is a newly refurbished building which once housed the Tobago House of Assembly's Department of Culture. Today, it's a space that not only recognizes its success, but honors perseverance and determination to keep producing great music and being the best that you can be. The Office of the Chief Secretary and other stakeholders recently hosted an adolescent drug intervention training workshop. Listen up for all the details. Tobago is stepping up the fight against drug and substance abuse. The island recently hosted a workshop through the efforts of the Ministry of National Security, the National Drug Council and the U.S. Embassy. The Tobago House of Assembly and the Inter-American Drug Abuse Control Commission of the Organization of American States also partnered for the workshop. 
Its aim is to improve and expand drug and alcohol abuse treatment and rehabilitation services for adolescents and youth. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles says such workshops are critical. He says they're an important reminder that our approach needs to be multifaceted and balanced to effect meaningful change. I believe this collaborative effort amongst us today demonstrates our unwavering commitment and shared dedication to this important cause. And I really wish to commend the National Drug Council and every partner involved from the Ministry of National Security through to the United States Embassy and the Organization of American States for the hosting of this training workshop. Substance abuse ruins lives, creating health, physiological and legal challenges. It can also lead to depression, academic underachievement, delinquency and unwanted teenage pregnancies. There is a growing body of evidence indicating that the use and abuse of alcohol and illicit and prescription drugs, psychoactive substances during adolescence, particularly heavy use, may have implications across the life course due to the effect on brain development. And this increases the risk and disorders we have in adulthood. Hence the reason for interventions such as these so that we can equip our various stakeholders in addressing some of these challenges. National Security Minister Stuart Young says it takes a collaborative effort to tackle substance abuse. He's thanking Tobago for being proactive in this fight. But every time I walk and I'm there on the ground, and every time I get the reports and see what it is our young people are faced with, it drives home exactly why what you are embarking on and what you've been working on and the training you will get over the next few days are so, so critical and important in this fight. And it is a fight we cannot afford to lose. So as you embark on this training, as you continue doing the work that you're doing, please understand it is very, very much appreciated. As the workshop was held at the Mount Irvin Bay Resort. I'm Kern DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Here at the Icons of Tobago Museum, you will experience a display of Calypso legacy like no other. Calypso Rose donated all her awards dating back to the start of her career and they're all on display right here. So why not come and see? Now here's something that's trending and it should pique everyone's interest. Sign language. This is a language that's slowly catching on in Tobago. Here's more in this story from Crystal George. Sign language. It's a language that is growing and catching on in our region. It is a system of communication using visual gestures and signs to convey meaning. Sign languages are full-fledged natural languages with their own grammar and lexicon. With this in mind, it's very important not to be left behind. That's why the folks at the Tobago Council of Disabilities are offering two classes for juniors and seniors over the vacation period because they saw the need to have more persons exposed to this mode of communication. And before, you know, when you spoke about sign language, it was more or less, you know, persons with hearing paired. But now we are looking at it as communication, communicating with persons who uh, hearing impaired and also the community as a whole. Apart from the common advantages related to learning another language, it provides an insight into the deaf culture and bestows more opportunities to communicate with those who are deaf or hearing impaired. People are really interested now and getting involved with their, their relatives who have disabilities. You know, there's an awareness program that is really hitting persons now, you know. I don't know why, but it is out there. And so we need to have classes like this to help persons who want to learn to help our, our persons with disability. And classes will be ongoing, says Mrs. Peters. What we also want to do is to have an ongoing class. So one of the important things we want to do with this class is to have it go on. As a matter of fact, we have decided to have it as a five-year program. So those who are at 2019, let's sign 2019, this class would come back next year.
participants expressed how happy they were to be a part of the classes and even showed off their skills. Sign language is a language that is catching on. It's something that I've always wanted to do. So I'm glad that I'm doing it now, even though at this age, you know what I mean? But still, it's a learning experience and I think it's going to help in terms of communicating. This is how to say your name. My name is A-I-D-E-N. That's how I say my name. Well, it is good, it's great, I like it. Having fun. The classes were held at the Happy Haven School for Children with Special Needs in Signal Hill. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It is time for a break, but when we return, we'll tell you what some of the island's kids are getting up to for their holidays. Stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Kivo, and tune in to Let's Talk Tobago. The Icons of Tobago Museum also provides avenue for the education of students, access to relevant information and the life and careers of both Calypso Rose and Winston Shadow Bailey are available for all to enjoy. Now, a variety of camps are being offered at this time of year for children to meet their needs and interests and keep them occupied during the vacation period. In this next story, we tell you of one that has been around for some time. Listen up. The Cool Kids Camp has become a staple for children in the July-August vacation. It is hosted by the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor for children between the ages of 5 and 11 years. The camp is now in its seventh year and focuses on the academic, social and creative development of children. The camp would have started way back in 2013 and the whole idea came about when we you know we had parents during the July August vacation, parents kept coming to the office and asked what do we have to offer for the children. And then that's when the idea came about that we should start a camp during the July August vacation. And from 2013 until now the camp has been running successfully. The camp includes fun activities such as sightseeing tours, handicraft, heritage experiences, games and even aerobic burnout sessions. At the camp, what we try to do is that we try to do a little of everything. We try to do a little, we have persons from different organizations coming in, persons from the health sector, so we have the dental unit, we have the food and nutrition unit, we have persons from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service coming in, we have persons from TEMA, so we try to do educational, as well as we have the handicraft unit within the department, so we try to utilize our handicraft tutors where they're coming on afternoons. Approximately 114 children registered for this year's Cool Kids Camp. The camp will run for three weeks and at the end, participants will receive a certificate of completion. The Cool Kids Camp is excellent in everything they do. And we are also learning table manners, how to tie-dye and how to make structures out of paper. All kind of different stuff that will help you later when we also learn our heritage. The camp is being hosted at the Lowlands Multipurpose Facility. I'm Patricia Nicholson for Let's Talk Tobago. If you are in Tobago vacationing or you've just never been to the Icon Museum, it is a great place to visit during this vacation season. You are sure to leave feeling inspired and very, very proud. Now, child abuse is a great concern in communities throughout the nation, as the effects of this abuse is a violation of children's human rights and an obstacle to their education and development. One training workshop is working on eradicating child abuse through awareness and prevention. Listen to this story. The Office of the Prime Minister Gender and Child Affairs, in collaboration with the Children's Authority, is putting a focus on preventing child abuse through training workshops. In Tobago, youth officers were among the target group. They were educated about child abuse prevention strategies and reminded of their responsibilities towards shaping the future of youth on the island. This one is very critical. This year, the Children's Authority focused on this one emotional, which people also refer to as psychological abuse. It's very, 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 very important because I think it's something we overlook, true or false? We pay attention to sexual. But I want to say though, the thing with emotional and psychological abuse is that when you talk to a child in a certain way and you demean them when they're young, it destroys them, their sense of worth and their sense of being. And that's dangerous because that one leads to children accepting some of the worst things in their lives. 
The youth officers engage in interactive sessions where they learn the steps in helping a child who may be in an abusive situation. Be accessible and receptive. Take what a child says seriously. Make a careful record of what the child shares. Stay calm, listen carefully, and never blame the child. Thank the child for sharing with you and reassure them of your support. One child development specialist pointed out that the same alarm should go off for the boys as they do for girls. As youth workers and duty bearers, we have to be just as vigilant for our boys as we are for our girls. And if we take a look at ourselves, really, if we see a young boy by himself among a group of other boys, sexual abuse is not going to jump into our head first. If we see a, a young boy by himself, we're not going to be thinking that this is a possible case of abuse of a boy being neglected. If it's a girl, our alarm bells go off one time. And so, just as you're saying, if we're talking about equality among the sexes and among the genders, we have to look at everybody the same way. Training workshops were held at the Office of the Prime Minister, Central Administrative Services, and the Bell Garden Multipurpose Facility. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. Let's take a look at who had their say this week with Marlon Gottsleben. That's not hold on. I've written for the money for the question now. It's that time again. It's have your say time again. And today is Emancipation Day. The question we're asking today is, when you hear the word emancipate or emancipation, what does that word mean to you? This is what you said. What comes to mind is freedom and celebration. At the same time, celebrate all of our, what we, are, we could call our heritage, but especially to celebrate ourselves as Africans who have overcome the, the ravages of slavery. Freedom. Celebration of freedom. Freedom from slavery. And all that following. Continuing the freedom that our ancestors had fought for, you know, and we are supposed to continue that freedom in love and peace and harmony. Our forefathers fight for the freedom of the black people and so forth. So we have to celebrate emancipation, heritage and everything. In Tobago, we have to be more vigilant and watchful of our freedom that we already have because of our ancestors at fought for us. So we need to make sure and keep that freedom and don't lose this freedom. So in order to do this, we have to keep on praying and make sure we always enchant the ancestors and bless them up. Emancipation is when we get Christ as our savior because only then can we have true emancipation. True emancipation is when we have freedom to do things in this world, freedom to live our lives, not just physically, but from a spiritual perspective, because many people say, you know, they, they're free, but they're still bound by sin and different things of this world. In my view, emancipation is a journey. It's not a destination. For all of us, we have to continue working on ourselves, working on the things that we find to be important, working on the things that we celebrate, working on the things that we step aside so that we get closer and closer as we continue to grow to becoming fully emancipated beings. Happy emancipation. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week.